All right. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to Shantae and the Pirates Curse. My name is Lurie DeMonikens. You've probably seen me flailing around the backside of the desk for the past day and a half, but I can play video games, too. Uh, Shantae and the Pirates Curse. Love this game to death. Really fun Metroidvania in the series. Um, big thing before we get into the run, I'm playing this in pirate mode. You're going to see these two modes pop up here. Uh, there are five pirate items you get in the five dungeons in this game. Pirate mode starts you off with all five. So right off the bat, I'm going to be having a lot of really good movement options, which I will explain as we get into the run. Speaking of getting into the run, are we ready to go? All right. You guys ready? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. If you don't understand, Shantae has seven letters in it, so I decided we should count from seven. So Shantae is going to wake up, which is something that I don't think anybody really wants to do. Um, but uh, the first level here, Burning Town, kind of a series staple, uh, really good music. We're instantly going to see some of my uh, movement at work from the pirate mode items. Uh, first off, we have the boots. You're going to see I'm going to go into this little state after holding a direction for long enough. And now I'm doing this dash. Um, really fast, I deal a lot of damage. It's incredibly good to have this early in the game because we usually don't get it until like Dungeon 4. Um, the next two things you're going to see me use are the cannon and the hat. Um, the cannon gives me three more mid-air jumps. So I have a lot of maneuverability in the air with that and can cover a lot of really far gaps. And the uh, hat is a sort of like glider. Uh, it may seem kind of weird to have that at the same time as the... Um, cannon, which is just really good, but the hat is really good for distance, so, and you've got it earlier in the game, usually, so that's kind of its importance there. Uh, as we go into this next room, I'm going to use a pike ball um, to hit a switch instantly. Pike ball is an item that, as you can see, it circles around me. It actually lasts for a full minute, so it's really nice. And the next of the pirate items you're seeing is the scimitar here. It gives me kind of a ground pound-esque attack, and it's really good when we need to fall quickly, which we do a fair bit, and it can also destroy blocks and hit enemies below me, which I'll be making use of throughout the run. Um, this has been a pretty good burning town. It's a pretty easy prologue stage, but the first boss of the run here, Ammo Baron, is incredibly luck-based. Um, he has two attacks he can do. He can either dash at me or shoot cannonballs. He's dashing at me. Um, he can do anywhere between one to four dashes and then shoot anywhere between one to three cannonballs. The final cannonball he shoots is going to be red, and I can hit that back at him and then start dealing damage to him. Um, usually, uh, the, the pike ball lasts for a full minute, so we do Burning Town fast enough to have the pike ball in this fight, and that actually lets us get a two-cycle fight. So next time he goes back in his tank, it's going to end the fight with the next red cannonball. And that's pretty lucky. Um, you don't, again... Entirely luck-based what attacks the Arrow Baron decides to do. So, thankfully, he was nice to me because he's not always nice. And then we have a lot of cutscenes. When it comes to cutscenes, I actually can pause in the middle of them. So, I'm going to say I'm very skilled while just skipping cutscenes. Essentially, um, pressing start will advance to the next text box. But I can pause if it's like there's not a text box up. So the big thing about skipping text is I can't mash start. I have to like know when a cutscene is going to start or a text box is going to start and then press start to skip it and then not be mashing too hard. Like I'll show you here, just for example. Uh, I can't pause during that one apparently. But like I could pause during that. So a uh, big time save is knowing where cutscenes are because again, if you're just mashing start, you're going to pause a lot. Um, and so it's usually worth it to be safe and maybe let a text box run for about half a second before um, before skipping it, just so you know you're not pausing the game, because pausing the game is uh, kind of sad. Um, so Risky captures us, brings us to the lab here, where Dark Magic turns a Tinker Bat into a Cackle Bat. Uh, we're going to have to fight this Cackle Bat. It's a pretty easy fight. When we hit it, it jumps into the air. So in order to try and reduce it from being annoying and stalling, uh, I'm just going to try and follow it as it's in the air. Um, unfortunately, it did get to do a dive attack, which is a little luck, a uh, little bit luck-based and a little bit annoying. Uh, but after that fight, we're going to get the lamp, and we're going to be able to suck up the dark magic from the uh, cackle bat. There are 20 cackle bats in this game, including this one. And if you get all 20 of the dark magic that they have, 
that allows you to fight the true final boss and get the good ending. Um, we're not going to be doing that in this run. Uh, the run that does that is called All Dark Magic, or 100% also does that. Uh, but we're just going to be uh, focusing on beating the game. So sorry if you like the best ending. We're not going to see it. Um, we get the library card from Sky here in Scuttletown in order to... Um, get access to the library in the palace. And now we have to go to Sequin Land Palace. Uh, the game makes you save before leaving. And then we're gonna do, after we show this guy our library card, the first risky shuffle of the run. So the boots I mentioned, if you long for a prolonged time, straightforward, um, that's how you get the run. However, the game doesn't necessarily check that you're holding the same direction for a long period of time, or that you're moving in a direction for a long period of time. It just wants you to be holding any horizontal direction, so left or right, for long enough. Um, so if I'm like holding left on the analog stick and tapping right on the D-pad, I can kind of charge my run in place. And that's going to be really helpful because we're not always going to have a bunch of space to be charging that. Um, so now we're in the sewers. We need to get three flesh pops. These snakes have a 50% chance to drop flesh pops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them under a ceiling and uh, kind of bounce on them with the scimitar and they get killed multiple times when that happens because of how I can like hitting the enemy which kills it and then I'm hitting it again before the death animation finishes um and so you get six kills off those two snakes which averages out to three flesh pops I think I got exactly three uh yeah I got exactly three um extra flesh bombs can be used for a little bit of a cool piece of tech that I might get show off throughout the run. It's not guaranteed. It's a little bit luck dependent on getting item drops. So I'll maybe try and show off one or two if I know I have the stuff for it, but there's no guarantee. Uh, so we get to get the squid oil here. Um, I used the final pirate item to finish the, get the puzzle for the travel brochure. I used the gun. Um, and that's actually a really big thing of pirate mode. Almost even more than having all the movement tech options from the beginning just lets you like go through early part of the games faster, like dashing through this room, is having every pirate item early lets you cut out a lot of backtracking where the game intends for you to have abilities that you don't have yet. Um, so like I get the squid oil now, I'm not supposed to get that until the end of the next island. And speaking of the next island, uh, we get the Forbidden Islands map from that globe right there. And we're ready to kind of venture off into the big portion of the game. I do have to run back through um, Scarecrow Fields and I believe it's Tumble Forest here. Um, but that gives me a little bit... Uh, Tangle Forest, my bad. Uh, but it gives me a little bit of time to talk about item drops. So every time I run into an enemy with a dash, you might notice a pause. And that might not seem good. Um, but not only... There's a lobster tail. Um, not only does the pause get shorter, the more enemies you get in a dash, um, it does more damage, which is cool. And so dashing is actually a really good way to kill really strong er enemy, er enemies and also pick up items. There are quite a few items I'm going to hopefully be picking up a lot of throughout the run. It's where the big luck of this run comes in, is getting the items you need from enemies. And I have backups. I can buy them. Uh, or just use lesser items if I don't get the ones I need. But hopefully you'll see me get a lot of good item drops. And before we leave uh, Scuttletown, I'm actually going to go to the shop. I'm going to buy three Pirate Flares and a Super Pike Ball. Um, pirate Flares are really good. They let me warp back to Risky's ship from any outside area on an island. So, like, I can't do it from inside a dungeon, for example. But it's a really good way to just quickly get back to Risky's ship to go back to... Uh, switch islands. I also buy a super pike ball, which is just an upgraded version of a pike ball. You'll see me use it on the uh, not next boss, but the boss after that. So we're still a little bit of ways. Uh, so now we're on Saliva Island. I got a bubble shield. That's one of the items I'm looking for for the run. Uh, there's a lot of other items I would prefer to get instantly, but I'm not going to be sad about getting a bubble shield early because they're helpful. Um, so with our movement, we can skip a lot of stuff here. I'm supposed to grab a ring that activates these statues, but I just kind of don't need to do that. Um, what I do need to do is I need to go over here and get the ham stink. Our lamp can also be used to absorb smells, apparently, uh, because I need to wake up a creature at the, uh, at the top of this waterfall uh, that isn't here yet, so it can be the waterfall. Um, there are two really small skips here. We'll see if I get one of them. The other one is literally free. So if I... I did not get it. I'm trying to, like, run off the side here and press the button at the same time, just like that. 
and then I'm going to pause three times on this text box. So this skips the animation of the ham stink floating into this creature's nose, and then also pausing three times is what skips the animation. He usually like blinks his eyes open, like wakes up, and then creates the waterfall. So those two little skips skip both of those animations. It saves about eight seconds to do. Uh, so even the fact that I missed it once and like went through the screen transition, I probably still save time on them, uh, which is nice. Uh, and we're going to get the Petrify skill for doing all of that, which um, the person who usually gives me the ring, basically they're looking for a magic spell to... Uh, their wife was turned into the stone. They're trying to not have that be the current situation. So we're going to bring that to him, and uh, you'll see what happens. So we'll give him the Petrify spell. And, uh, oops. Uh, however, the weight of him also being turned into stone uh, will collapse the ground and give us access to the first dungeon. Um, if I haven't explained it yet, this game is very silly. Uh, it has a few serious moments, but a lot of the things that happen, it's a lot of antics, mostly. So now we're in Spittle Maze, and I'm instantly going to leave Spittle Maze. Um, there is a hidden area under this, uh, under the opening of the dungeon that gives me access to the secret labyrinth, which uh, if you've ever played the first original Shantae game on the Game Boy Color, uh, is themed after Dribble Fountain, the first dungeon from that game. Um, this might seem like a weird detour, but it's actually really helpful because we're going to pick up some keys. Uh, keys in this game are universal, um, so if you pick one up, it can be used technically in any dungeon. The way the game gets around this is designing its dungeons the way a normal video game would, and... Um, they don't put any excess keys in the game, uh, but uh, we have a way to get around that. Um, I'm going to go over here, get a, another key that's in this room right here. And then also I'm collecting money. I mentioned money is good for buying items earlier, so I'm just kind of picking it up throughout the run where places I know I won't lose time. And then I'm going to jump in this pit. In this game, you get sent back to the beginning of a room you were in when you die. So that dungeon starts with a uh, giant fall, but it's only one room long. And I can just leave it by death warping. So now we just have two extra keys. And that's going to be very useful for the middle of the run, actually. Uh, I'll explain where we use those. Uh, obviously, I just used one there because I haven't picked up a key yet. But the other key is... Um, we're going to be saving that one for much later. And again, I'll talk about where I'm using them and why when we get there, but uh, we still have some other dungeons to get through. This area, the rest of this dungeon is not that hard. It is the first dungeon after all, and I have like four upgrades I'm not supposed to. Uh, but the boss is pretty tricky, and there's also this enemy room. These guys like to dash a lot, as you can see, and they're really hard to track down. So I'm just going to opt to jump on top of them and just scimitar bounce until they're both dead. Um, I'm hitting both of them at the same time right now, you might notice, so this is actually really good, because these enemies are really hard to track down, like I said. But um, with that said, we're almost at the first boss, which is, um, I don't know if I'd say one of the harder ones, but definitely if, uh, it can be a little tricky to do right, but if I do it right, it's going to be really cool. So, um, this is Cyclops' plant, as you're going to see. It is a plant with one eyeball. Self-explanatory. Uh, so I'm going to jump up to it. All right, I messed it up. It's fine. I have invincibility frames now. Uh, so we sandwich ourselves between the boss and the ceiling, and that's not the end of the boss. Um, the boss is going to start moving around now, and basically my goal is going to try and be to do the same thing while the boss is bouncing like crazy. So uh, I didn't do it right there, but you saw the idea on the second loop where the boss kind of, like, does this. Yeah, I got hit there. It's fine. Uh... Okay, that was the last hit. Uh, that wasn't perfect, but you saw the general idea of the strat, so uh, good enough, I guess. And yeah, that is um, that is the first uh, major dungeon. That's the first, I think, Labyrinth of Evil. Uh, honestly, this is one of my favorite parts of the run, which is kind of sad to say that the beginning parts of the run is your favorite because it means it's slightly getting, I wouldn't say worse, um, but uh, there we go. And uh, I did a little trick there. So, I have a few consumable items. Essentially, if you have an item selected on your inventory, if you press L and R at the same time, you can just quick use it uh, without having to open the inventory. And 
Um, usually, if you land on a key item uh, in the air, you have to like float down a little bit to land on the ground to do the animation. So if you have a consumable equipped, you can jump and then after collecting the key item, mash L and R and use your um, consumable before hitting the ground. And you will collect the key item, but it'll only use the animation of eating food instead of collecting the key item, which is like several seconds faster. Um, usually it depends on like food item drops, how much you get to do that. So you don't get to see it too often, but uh, I do have another lobster tail I know, so I can do it right here. This one's a little bit weird because I have to like technically wait for the animation of it bouncing on the ground before picking it up, but it gets blocked by a ceiling. So even though it's on the ground for a while, it's still not able to be able to pick up for like a few seconds. Uh, these ghosts are really annoying, so I'm trying to avoid them. And then I'm going to do a shuffle through the save screen here. And we're going to get to a pretty infamous section of this game. Uh, this is Run Run Roddy Tops. And it's kind of tricky. Um, essentially, you can see Roddy Tops is in danger here, and then she's going to not be in danger. Uh, but her legs are going to give out, quote unquote. They don't give out. She's just trolling us. And now we're in Run Run Roddy Tops. We can't attack here. We just have our running and our jumping. Um, and it's a pretty basic section, you know, enemies are trying to hit you. If they do hit you, um, you get sent back to the beginning of the room, simple as that. No health, no nothing. You can't game over, which is good. If you die in this game, you get sent back to your last save point, which I'm not going to be saving a lot in this run, so, because it, it, like, takes a decent amount of time. Gatekeeper, he's luck-based. Uh, this isn't luck-based, though. So these tongue guys are where kind of the big speed of Run Run Roddy Tops comes in. As their tongue is coming out, as you can see, it comes out and then it sways left or right a little bit. I went too far. If you just barely drop off the ledge as the um, as the tongue is coming out, like you just saw there, uh, you can kind of skip past them and not have to worry about uh, waiting for them like I'm doing a lot here. I'm going to play it safe just because I already messed up once and it is kind of precise, but it's not too hard. Uh, I'm going to wiggle left and right. Nope. I'm going to wiggle left and right at the start of this screen to activate a tongue dude below me. And then I'm not making it right, but I'm trying to do a sneak here because these guys, to be fair as enemies, are kind of on cooldown a little bit. So if you activate this guy from above, um, please? Nope. <laughs> if you activate him from above, uh, he won't activate by the time you get down there. And the next big thing of Ron and Roddy Tops are these moving spikes. Um, they're on cycles, so like timers, basically. And they're a lot of the reason why this section is slow is because we have to do a lot of waiting for these spikes to go ahead. So yeah, a lot of the section just turns into waiting. So Alu, if you have any donations, now is the perfect time. Thank you very much. Uh, chat, I need your help. We have an incentive coming up and it is for tuning. Um, and it is the bonus gun passam run. We're currently at around 400. We need to reach 750 if we want it. Help, help me help you get more game video games for this evening because it'll be two birds with one stone. You'll get uh, the bonus gun percent run and it will also go towards the $5,000 that we require for the bonus game straight. So if you have any donation, prime, uh, prime subs, anything, get yourself a nice fine, uh, fastest fur t-shirt. All those could help goes toward that incent those incentives and help the charity animal park and if you want don't know where to go you can type in exclamation mark incentive to see what's still there or exclamation mark merch so definitely tell me out get let's get that bonus percent uh, oh my gosh gun percent bonus percent gun percent run going we still need around 350 so Let's get that number out there. If you have nothing, help help me help you spread the word. See if there's any friends of yours, maybe. Have Prime subs, get them to sub it. Get yourself some nice PV Cheetah emotes to use for the next month. And yeah, spread the word. So this is, uh, we're near the end of the section. This is where this part can get pretty annoying with these ghost enemies. Um, pretty much they pick a height. They have a maximum height, but they basically just kind of pick a height. 
that they feel like, and then shoot a really slow moving projectile at uh, at that height. And it can get really easy to, it's really easy to get trapped by a projectile in this section. Thankfully, the ghosts were nice to me. And then I'm gonna wait this guy out before jumping over this one. Um, that's probably the scariest room normally in this section um, because, um, yeah, like the ghosts can straight up trap you. And I'd say the other scariest room in the section is this one. Um, this, if I, is the last like main room of the section. Um, there's a little bit of uh, time save here. Uh, if this tongue guy, if I get to him fast enough, I can run past that spike just before it comes up. It's a little scary looking, but this part of the room is also scary. These gravestone guys, when they act, they don't have a hitbox until they pop up. Um, but when they pop up, they shift their hitbox a little bit, and it's really scary because you never know when they're going to pop up. It's random. Um, but thankfully, I got through that room fine, and we're at the end of Run Run Roddy Tops. I just need to get to her house, and that'll be it. There you go. And that's uh, kind of the big thing here. Now we're near Roddy Tops' house, uh, and we can find her brother, Poe, who has a carriage he wants to repair, but... Uh, can't because he doesn't have squid oil, but we do. Uh, so we give him the squid oil. Um, and as a reward for helping him fix the cart, he is going to give us uh, a ride back. Um, <laughs> but then he is going to give us the shriveled thing. It smells. Um, and then we tell him we're going to cherish it always and then immediately give it away. Um, we've all done it. Don't lie. So we're going to give it to this weird creature that's like it wants the triple thing as food, I guess. It doesn't look like you should eat it, but I'm not going to question. Spiderweb Island is kind of creepy. Uh, but this is actually going to give us access to the second uh, dungeon, uh, Cackle Tower. Um, Cackle Tower is pretty notable because uh, we're going to be doing a few key fights, and it's a pretty... Uh, centralized area for enemy drops. Uh, these skeletons have a really good chance to drop some of the items we want for the rest of the run. And then we're going to also do this little kind of mini boss-ish fight uh, that has a really small chance to drop a really good item for the run. There's a standard pike ball. This arena here, you're also going to see a little bit of the capability of the... Well, you should usually see a little bit of the capability of the dash as a good item for... Um, combat, but I did not hit any of the skeletons, unfortunately. I didn't get the cha uh, the dash charge up fast enough. With a pike ball here, you can skip a cycle of that fat lady. Usually she flies away one more time. And uh, she dropped a super monster milk. That's the super lucky good item that I want. Uh, basically, monster milk and super monster milk buff my attack for a minute. Normal monster milk by 10, super by... Uh, or other way around. Normal monster milk by 5, super by 10. And um, not this boss uh, that's coming up, but every boss for the rest of the game, not including the next one, I'm going to want to have a Super Pike Ball and a Super Monster Milk for it. So uh, that's the earliest one we can get in the game, and it's really nice to get that one because there's only one other enemy we fight in the whole run that drops it. There is... We can buy them from a shop, the shop in Scuttletown, but they're pretty expensive. It's um, 75 for one, and I want to say, like near 200 for a pack of three so i usually get money in my route to buy one in the middle of the game and then hope that i get lucky with the other three however i do i will be picking up a lot of extra money like backup if i need to by the middle of the game um i know where a lot of backup money is so it shouldn't cause a problem and maybe i'll just get lucky and get all the drops i want anyways so next boss this one's really tricky this is the empress spider um essentially um she has two versions of attacks she can do. She can either drop down to try and lunge at me. Also, I'm going to hover over Pirate Flare. Um, or she can wiggle in the air a little bit and drop a projectile. Uh, if she drops down at me, I'm going to try and want to pin her in place as much as I can. Um, and if she's up... Yeah, if she starts wiggling, she's going to drop a projectile on me. So I'm just going to jump up and try and get her. Um, this fight's a little tricky. Um, obviously, it's a lot of mashing. It's a lot of keeping her in place. She does like to get stunned fairly often. Uh, I'm also going to take fire damage, which is really not good. Uh, I'm close to dying here. Hopefully, I don't. At the beginning of the game, we got an auto-revive item. Um, 
And I usually like to spend it not here, so ideally I will not die. But, um, please die soon. Thank you. Okay, that was close. Uh, yeah, that fight can go a lot better. But, again, you got the general idea of what I was going for. If you're really specific, there's like a basically stun lock you can do, and you can keep the spider, the Empress Spider in place. But it's it's kind of ridiculous. I definitely don't think I could do that in a setting like this, where uh, I just kind of have to be ready for anything. Uh, I also, like I mentioned before that, after using my Super Pike Ball, I hovered my Select Cursor over the Pirate Flare so that I could use it. I mentioned these are really good. Here's the first time I'm actually using one in the run. Um, to warp right back to Risky. It saves a lot of time. Um, and we, after beating the Empress Spider, got the map for Tanline Island. So I mentioned Cackle Tower was a very good portion of the run in terms of item drop luck. Tanline Island is like the luck-based item drop island of the run. There's a lot of stuff on this island um, to do, but also there's a lot of enemies that have a really good chance for, to drop really good items. So here's hoping we get some luck. We already have a bubble shield, which these cacti are known for dropping, but getting an extra is not bad. Um, and then there's also these scorpion girls. I'm going to kill this one. Uh, they're a lot easier to kill with the cannon. Um, they have a chance to drop either a super pike ball or a super monster milk, which, as I uh, said earlier, at this point, I want four of both for each of the remaining bosses in the game. Uh, so I can kind of save time or try and get lucky with uh, killing all the ones I want. Since I haven't really gotten anything yet, I'm gonna probably err on the side of killing more, uh, so I have more of a chance for getting all the items I want. But we're actually super close to the biggest super pike ball grind of the run. Um, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, we're gonna go back to Saliva Island real quick because um, we kicked up the X-Ray specs from Squid Baron. Um, basically, Squid Baron, we gave him the travel brochure. Earlier, we brought him on vacation to Tanline Island. Um, he gives us the X-Ray specs. To get into Tanline Temple, which is our next objective, we need to um, get the password. So we need... Okay, there's another bubble shield. I'm getting so many of those. Uh, but we need uh, three... Uh, mummy sketches because those are the three there's three like locks on the door um, I'm doing a little bit of money grinding here because this one's a little bit under on money and I'm gonna go to the shop in a moment so uh, I'm gonna make sure I have enough for everything I want to buy unfortunately I got hit there but it's fine uh, and here is the first mummy sketch uh, so I need all three to see the password but uh, that's the first one and then I'm going to use my last Pirate Flare. I bought them in packs of three. If you can buy things in packs of three, um, it's cheaper than buying three individually. But obviously, for the sake of running a shop that makes money, um, if you only need to buy two, it's still less expensive to just buy two uh, individuals. Which will come into play in the shopping I'm about to do because I'm going to buy exactly five Pirate Flares. So I don't want to buy two packs of three because that's slightly more money. Uh, so, Sky's parents bring home one of the mummy statues I need, and it unfortunately turns Barracuda Joe into stone, uh, but uh, we need the statue. So, thanks, Grandpa, I guess. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm going to buy five pirate flares and a super monster milk here. I'm going to check my inventory real quick. I'm at two super monster milks and no super pipe balls. Okay, that's fine. That's generally pretty good. Uh, wrong button. Hello, thank you. Um, so now we're going back to Tanline Island. The third mummy sketch is here. I'm also going to do a little bit extra in terms of uh, continuing the story because I have the dash now. You usually get it from the fourth dungeon, but I need a item in this area that requires the dash. I'm going to use a lamp again to get pick up the money. That's something I never explained the lamp did. It actually picks up money from all around the screen, which is really good to pick up money fast. Yeah, so this skeleton, we go back on this bridge twice, and uh, it just has a giant collection of uh, skeletons. Uh, and they have a pretty decent super pike ball drop rate. Unfortunately, I'm not getting any. So hopefully I'll get some on the way here. There's a super. One. Okay. Uh, 
I, again, the Scorpion girls, I'll make sure to get as much of those as I can. Those have a chance. Three lions. <laughs> so that password is random every time you uh, play this game. So it being three of the same animal is pretty funny. Um, I actually did have that happen in practice, but uh, it's pretty rare otherwise. And there's another Super Monster Milk. Uh, game, this is maybe the one time in my life I want you to give me pike balls instead. Uh, it, it's fine. Uh, so, Lion. A uh, little hard to navigate through, but we get there. The five animals on that key are fish, bird, lion, hippo, gator, in that order. So knowing the animal of that, or the order of those animals, it's important uh, because you want to be able to input that code as fast as possible. And now we're in Tan Lion Temple, uh, and we get mistaken for the princess and put in this throne room. So we're going to be doing a stealth section here. We're going to try and sneak out of the temple. Um, basically, these wolf hat guards um, are going to send us back if they catch us. So we have to not get caught. Um, this room has a little bit of waiting, but this section is still pretty intense. This ne The next two rooms I'm going to do, uh, if I do them right, I should be done with the stealth section after this. Um, this room, I'm going to try and climb up this as fast as possible to save a cycle on those guys on the top. I'm going to pick up a key uh, from this area right here. And this next room has a strategy. If I get it, it saves five seconds. If I don't get it, I lose about 45. <laughs> so... I'm going to jump at the very edge of that. I'm going to wait for this guy for a while, run to the right. That's the, fir the, fir the, the first jump is the first of two hard ones. Uh, the other hard one is this guy. At just as he turns around, I'm going to jump over him. There we go. Yeah, no, like I said, saves five seconds and loses like 40. <laughs> so definitely a risk, but it's just a fun little time save. And I really like the route through that room, so I was hoping I would get to show it off, and I did. So this is the reason why we picked up uh, all those keys from the secret labyrinth at the beginning of the run. Um, usually you'd have to pick up all three of the keys um, in this area, in the stealth section, which means we have to play a lot of the really long stealth section, which I've never wanted to do in my life. Um, but fortunately, since we got those keys earlier, we can just unlock all three of the doors we need to free Risky, Sky, and Roddy Tops, who have all also been mistaken for the princess. Again, this game has a lot of goofy stuff in it. Um, and we can bring them all to the bottom right here. Um, pull this rope, and that's going to be the end of Tanline Temple here. Um, so we're going to go into this room. And we're going to see a statue of what the princess looks like. And then the princess, who has been missing, apparently, is going to return. She was missing because she was at the grocery store. <laughs> uh, so that gives us the golden pickaxe, and we need that to progress in Tanline Island. Um, at this point, uh, we're pretty much just set to head to the next dungeon. Uh, we're going to give this guy the golden pickaxe to finish the mining job. Um, and then just start running to the right for a little while. So this is another good point for any donations, any announcements, go for it. Perfect. We have a ten ten dollar donation from Anonymous. Anonymous. Yes. I like furry speed running and helping. Win win win. Another four dollar donation from Alterma. Altermathan. This is a donation from all of the misses that occurred during the Run Run Roddy Tops section in Shante and the Pirate Skirts. Since there was four, four misses, there's here's four hundred moonies. This is going for the Tunic Gun Percent bonus run. Cat Dragon says trans rights. Another donation from Tempest Mask 1000 uh, for 1435. Hey friends, congrats to the fastest fur on getting a successful first time live event going. A shame I won't be able to directly help out, but this is the least I can do. Especially while I correctly guessed for Mrs. Dern and Roddy section. Shanti is such a rad series and Lori is an, always a super cool runner to watch. Best of luck with Dagron? Lori and also Nui. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna suggest this again. I would like you guys to submit donations with some pirate puns. Bad pirate puns. Just make sure they're not R rated. Alright, so we're pretty far into this dungeon. Uh, I pick up a key there just uh, for later. Another time I pick it up for a later dungeon. Uh, but this section here, um, 
Uh, we have a little enemy arena, and this is going to be my last chance to get item drops. If I get, like, one Super Pike Ball or miss... Uh, how many? How much do I have of each? Uh, three and two. Okay. Oh, this enemy. Right. I forgot about him. Uh, hi. Don't hit me, please. You do a lot of damage. Thank you. Okay. Three and three. Okay, that's fine. Um, so that's the end of this enemy arena here. And then I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to use Shantae's crouching animation to... Oh, I was a little bit early. Uh, I'll try it again. Basically, I'm trying to use Shantae's crouching animation as a cue to start a risky shuffle. Um, and if I do it right, I can run through here really early and make it under this crusher in one cycle just like that. Uh, I'm going to pick up a little bit of safety health here, and then I'm going to get into the next boss. I'm going to equip my items first. Yep, perfect. And the next boss is going to be uh, the Squid Baron. So Squid Baron, um, as you notice, I entered, I used my items early. These items last for a minute, so I'm going to be good on them. Um, essentially, Squid Baron, I want to be rather particular with how I'm dealing my damage, because Squid Baron has two phases, spoiler alert. Um, Essentially, though, uh, I need to be careful because um, depending on what Squid Baron is in the middle of doing um, when you beat Phase 1 um, will determine how his attack pattern plays out at the start of turn two or Phase 2. So if I do it right, I can instantly crush him here, and then he's going to start doing his healing attack. And if I mash attack fast enough, uh, I should kill him before he even does anything. So that's Squid Baron. That was... Yeah, that was basically the best I could have done on that fight. <laughs> so, there you go. And unlike all the other dungeons where uh, a Tinker Bat shows up and gives us a um, a map, Squid Baron's just going to give us a map right now um, to Mudbog Island, which I think giving somebody a map to Mudbog Island as a gift is, like, probably a sign that you hate that person. Um, <laughs> but it's... Uh, it's good. Um, I actually am slightly low on money for the thing I was going to do, I believe. Uh, but I do need to go back to Scuttletown. So I'm going to actually uh, take a detour to the shop. Um, actually, wait, no, I think I'm good. So I think if I have enough money to buy one Super Pike Ball. Yes, and one Super Monster Milk. And I am at... Three and three, so I'm good for the rest of the run on mon on items. So, uh, unfortunately, I didn't think I got lucky, but I got just lucky enough for it to matter. Um, so now I'm going to go to Bolo and Mimic in the uh, lab here. I'm going to give, be giving Bolo the fossil I got back on Spiderweb Island and the X-ray specs, which we used to read the mummy statues. And we're going to get the death mask, uh, which is required to enter uh, the main body of Mudbog Island. So... Uh, with that out of the way, we are going to head over to the island. Um, this area is kind of where the game starts expecting you to have gotten some health upgrades. The enemies here are going to start dealing a lot of damage. Uh, and this area in particular has a lot of really tight hallways, and it's really easy for me to lose my dash speed. But if I do it right, the movement's really cool. So let's see how that goes. Okay, good. Good. So far, we made it to the save point here. We usually use our, you lose our dash here, but I can just start it back up in this room. Glide a little bit. That's good. Okay. And then this room, probably the trickiest. Uh, I hit an enemy there. It's fine. I didn't lose my dash. Literally perfect. And then we're going to give this person the death mask, and we are going to gain access to the Village of Lost Souls, which is where... The body of this dungeon, or the body of this island, rather, takes place. I'm going to risky dash in, so I get uh, my boots going. And now we are in the Village of Lost Souls. So the first goal I have here is to grab three coins. Um, there are these three gamers in the middle area of the island that want to play a game with me, but they all lost their coins, so I need to go get those for them. Uh, blue one's right over here. Green one is just up here, so we can do that. And then the red one is on the other side. Uh, there's actually some pretty interesting stuff. I didn't mean to jump into that coin, but it's fine. Um, there's some pretty interesting stuff in this area. I'll make sure to show it off. Again, this is where the game starts expecting you to have some health upgrades. I think, like, 
nearly every enemy in this area does like a full heart of damage, which is four damage. You can take damage in quarter of a heart. So I'm sure you've been seeing throughout the game. Yeah, uh, almost every enemy in this area that isn't from past area, like these ghosts, um, is going to be dealing a full heart's worth of damage. And even the ghosts still deal two. Like the ghosts are a real problem in this game. They love showing up in really annoying places and uh, being really annoying. Um, I forgot there was a save room here. It's fine. I just need to go up here, get the red coin. And now we have all three coins. So now I can go back to the center of um, the village of Lost Souls. And we can do our gaming. Uh, because we all love gaming here, right? Also, I need to re-destroy these blocks. Okay, good. I'm going to try and charge a risky shuffle on this platform and then jump off. Um, and here is the gaming. So essentially, I have to do a coin flip tournament. Um, I have to win three coin flips in a row. Um, fortunately, if your luck is bad, um, after three fails at the tournament, um, the game will force you to win. So uh, I had my three fails there. So I'm going to guaranteed win this one. Um, it, it's If you win... Early, before the game forces a win, that's nice. Um, however, because of the, like, eventual forced win because you lose too much, it's not that much slower if you just lose really fast. So I almost lost it three times in a row, which is almost better than, like, almost winning once or twice. Unfortunately, I did almost win the third attempt. Um, so a little bit unlucky on the coin flips, but they're literally coin flips. You can't blame me too hard. Uh, so... I'm going to get the manly musk here from this manly spirit. Thank you. I'm into women. Um, and then <laughs> with that, uh, I can run down to the right here, uh, give the manly musk to this thing. Um, this thing is the dungeon. <laughs> so we can go into the dungeon now. Um, dungeon number four. Uh, one of the trickier ones casually but not really in the run. Uh, it's got a really hard boss fight, but uh, it itself as a dungeon, um, we're going to be skipping a lot of it uh, after we get through the first couple of rooms here. Um, essentially, um, the body of the dungeon is kind of this giant maze um, where you're supposed to kind of navigate the switch puzzle in order to set up a long bridge so that you can dash to that block I just dashed through and make it to the boss. Um, however, with risky shuffling, I don't actually need to do any of it and I can just get to the boss. Uh, I am going to drop a save here. This is probably the scariest boss in the run. And even though I have my insta revive, I'm not going to chance it too hard. Um, this is one of the two places I actually do have a backup save for if I were to die. So... Uh, if I didn't make that save, I technically would have been fine, but it's, it's, don't worry about it. Uh, so this is Dagron, and he's a nightmare. <laughs> um, essentially, I'm supposed to dash into these blocks on the side with the eyeballs to get a, some platforms to hit him out of the sky with, but I'm just going to opt to use the cannon, um, and knock him out of the sky. Um... So hopefully this goes well. There we go. And if I do it right, I should be able to get a two cycle here. Uh, not quite. So he's almost dead. Okay, I smacked him in the air. That was a pretty good fight. Um, the more damage he takes, the faster he swoops down. So uh, yeah, you saw just before I got the last hit how fast he was coming down. He comes down really fast, um, deals three damage. So three quarters of a heart on contact damage. And if you get hit, you get knocked down and you have to wait a whole nother cycle of him swooping down. And it's a nightmare. Um, if you don't get that fight good, it can go sour really fast. You can lose your auto revive. You can maybe still die after losing your auto revive. Um, so yeah, thankfully that fight went really well because I did not want to show you guys what that fight looks like when it goes poorly. Um, but unfortunately for the run, we do have to leave the village of Lost Souls uh, it's technically counted as like an indoor area. So I do have to make my way out and navigate a few screens before I'm allowed to use my pirate flare. Um, but once I do, obviously I can just make it back to uh, the opening of Mudbog Island and we can make our way to Frostbite Island with the Frostbite map.
So Frostbite Island is kind of like the beginning of Mudbog Island, where it's very movement-based and just kind of like straight to the right. But something that's really relieving about it compared to um, uh, compared to Mudbog Island is where Mudbog Island had a lot of really like closed, narrow hallways. Frostbite Island is incredibly open, and there's no ceilings in these rooms, so I can just like kind of fly over them. Um, I do lose a little bit of time if I hit an enemy, obviously, and the cannon shots from my triple jumps count as hitting an enemy. So, like, you'll sometimes just see me stop after jumping. Um, but, yeah, I mostly just want to avoid the upward slopes because, as you saw there, they do slow me down. There's me hitting another enemy with the cannon. But uh, eventually we make it here. And I'm going to climb up these chains as fast as I can. Um... And go to the middle here, and once I'm at the top of this, we make it to Propeller Town. Uh, Propeller Town is a pretty short but pretty movement-heavy section, so I am going to focus and toss it off to Alu. All right, thank you. We have one donation from Moonblaze Wolf for five dollars. Why did the pirates go to Fairy Week in Atlanta? Because they were scurvy dogs. Thank you for that pirate fun. Thank you. We are currently around 44,295. We're getting there. We're getting close to 5,000 for our bonus game for, for tonight, Stray. And we're still looking for more donations to help out on achieving the incentive for the bonus, uh, not bonus, well, gun percent run for Tunic. So if you have any little tiny bits of dollar, even every dollar counts. A dollar here, a dollar there? Who knows, we'll get there very shortly. And for people that don't know, once again, we are currently uh, raising money for FWA's chosen charity, Animal Park and the Conservators Center. Animal Park is a home to over 70 animals representing many different species around the world. The park believes that people are more likely to become infested in conservation and wildlife preservation for species after meeting them and learning about their inherent values. To learn more about the park's animals ambassadors, please visit www.animalparknc.org slash about slash residents. Alright, so we're going to use a pirate flare to get out of here. Um, there we go. Uh, so... Right now, what I'm working on is three kind of things I have to do. Basically, the Ammo Baron is enlisting someone's help to make a giant missile um, that the Ammo Baron can shoot out of a cannon. After the opening boss where we fought Ammo Baron, uh, he takes control of the town, and he's trying to build his own palace in place of Sequinland Palace. So um, I need to help Ammo Baron... Uh, gather pieces to make a missile to fire out of a cannon. Um, first thing I did was I got the targeting module from Bolo on Propeller Isle, uh, on, from Propeller Town. Second thing I need to do is get the spirit of Barracuda Joe. Um, I got given a random spirit uh, at the end of the fourth dungeon, um, and that was uh, I bring it to Roddy Top so she can figure out who the spirit belongs to, and now I can unpetrify Barracuda Joe uh, back in Sky's house. Uh, so that he can man the cannon, um, and we can fire the missile. The last thing I need to do, if you remember, back when I was in Tanline Island, I picked up the enchanted sword. Um, we need to go get that from, um, or we need to go give that to Branson, so that he can do a key man transformation, pretty much. Um, essentially, there are these two engineers uh, over at the uh, palace that are like kind of egging this random guy on to do something cool um, and so we're gonna give him this uh, enchanted sword so that he can do something cool um, so we give him the blade and he transforms into a superhero and he is going to be like I'm a hero <laughs> he's gonna be like I'm a hero you should listen to me I can be your role model you guys should go do your work. Um, and they're like, all right, and they go do their work. So now that's all three things I've picked up. I just need to um, actually restore Barracuda Joe. 
Um, and he's going to leave, and Sky's going to get pissed. Uh, but that's her problem. Sorry, Sky, I love you, but I need to speedrun right now. Um, we're going to give the target module to Ammo Baron, and then Ammo Baron is going to... Uh, we're going to talk to him again, and it's going to fire the cannon. So they're aiming for Sequinland Palace. They miss so hard. Not only do they shoot an island over, two islands over technically, but we'll get to that. Um, but the area they shoot actually reveals uh, the fifth dungeon. <laughs> So now we can go back to Frostbite Island um, and do the final dungeon of the run. For the most part. There technically is a finale dungeon, but uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, so I'm going to go over to Frostbite Island. I'm going to run over the first screen again. And once I'm through here, uh, there's just going to be this right here. Um, so... Right now, I technically have one key. I picked it up back in the Lost Catacombs and then never used it. Uh, so I still need to pick up two more keys throughout the course of this dungeon. Usually what you're supposed to do in this dungeon um, is uh, like get the cannon from the bottom of it and then bring it back up, pick up all the keys, and then finish the dungeon. But uh, I already have a key, and then I know where two are that are really quick, so we're just going to use that. There are these conveyor belts in this room. You're supposed to use them to be able to do a risky boot stash kind of in place. Uh, however, I've been risky shuffling the whole run, and I don't plan to stop now. Um, uh, so we get this key here, and I'm going to go to the left. Hopefully I don't get crushed. It is possible for an ice block to just appear out of that ceiling hole and just crush you. Uh, I'm going to equip a bubble shield, which blocks me from all projectiles, but not yet a monster milk or a pike ball, uh, because the seal maggot here is not instantly vulnerable. What I need to do is there are three lights on top of its head. I need to hit, or on top of its body. I need to hit it with the cannon. The order that I need to hit the lights uh, is random. However, once I hit all three, uh, it will reveal its weak point on its tail, and I can just start smacking it. Um, if I do it right, it's going to be a two cycle. So there's one cycle, and I just need to get the order of the lights puzzle again, and it's two, three, one. That can usually be really annoying to figure out, so I'm happy I know the puzzle solution. I just need to get the last hit here. I'm going to wait a little bit before shooting the cannon, because if the steel maggot is too close to the side of the screen, uh, you can't reach the weak point with your pike balls. Uh, but that's the end of steel maggot. Really easy fight if you get it right, and I also just got really lucky. So... Um, yeah, really good boss fights in this run, actually. Um, and with that, we are going to be able to go to the Pirate Master's Grave. Um, I think this map is going to be called, like, the Lonely Grave map. Yep. Uh, and with that, we can go to the Pirate Master's Grave. Uh, we're going to Pirate Flare back. It's only one screen, but at this point, it's still faster. Um, and... We don't really have any use for the Pirate Flares after this point. That's the last one I use for the run. So, yeah. Um, Lonely Grave right here. We're going to sail up. And uh, just kind of walk into the room once I can. Cutscenes. You know the deal. So, there's the Pirate Master. Um... He's going to grab Risky and do that. Uh, so we need to go save Risky. Um, if you know anything about the series, but haven't played this game somehow, that would be surprising, actually. Um, and for those that don't know the series, I should explain. Risky is usually the, like, the series' main antagonist, but we're helping her in this game uh, because of the curse of the dark magic of the Pirate Master. Uh, so now we need to run through Scarecrow Fields one final time, except it's taken over. Um, I accidentally lost my dash because I was adjusting my plushie. Um, oh, I picked up a heart squid. Oops. So these are the health upgrades in the game. If you get four of them, you can get a health upgrade. There are 32, so you can get eight health upgrades and get up to 30 or 10 hearts. There we go. I'm dashing again. Um, I need to be ready. You don't pick them up at all on 80%. I've been fine. Um, I've almost not been fine on a few occasions, but I've mostly been fine. Um, since it's a different map, I need to break through those blocks again. But now we're heading into the Pirate Master's Palace. He's completely taken over uh, Scuttle Town. Um, and this is where the last dungeon and the final boss is. The last dungeon is a little bit interesting. So, um, pretty much uh, the last dungeon, there are these three like gauntlet rooms you're supposed to do that are all really long and annoying. 
However, if I deploy my hat to gain a little bit of height before my first and final, or right after my first and final jumps, uh, I get just enough height to skip the gauntlet rooms. So there's one, there's two, and then there's still one more, and I have to finish the climb up this room. So uh, here's hoping I get all of them first try, because they're pretty tricky, honestly. Nope. Close, though. And there's the third one. Okay, there we go. And then get up here, and here we go. So for context, I'm going to save right here. The final boss is not that hard. Uh, we're not getting the true ending, so I only have to fight one phase of the final boss. However, uh, at Fastest for his last year, I ran this game, and my game crashed on this screen transition. <laughs> so going to play it safe, going to save. Fortunately, didn't crash again. So the Pirate Master, it's only one phase, so I'll let you know when time's coming. I'm going to use all my items as usual. As long as I'm careful about where he teleports, he can't really hit me because he uses mostly projectiles. This first phase, he teleports around. He can teleport either to the left, center, or uh, right side of the screen. Um, I'm hoping he does short teleports so I don't have to travel as much distance before trying to hit him. Uh, but he's going to do a teleport here, and then he's going to raise these platforms. This is the scary part, because I need to, like, get up there and hit him, but be careful about my health. I do still have my auto revive, so I still do have, like, another whole thing of health if I need it. There it is. And I can use that to wail into him a little bit. Time is going to be real soon. He's going to do this attack and die soon. Time. Um, so you want to know a funny story? You guys remember how in the final area of the game, I messed up my dash and I picked up the heart squid? This would have been a personal best if I didn't do that. <laughs> we were so close, but I literally have not gotten a time within three minutes of my personal best for the past week. So, hey, I'm still not complaining at all. Um, Risky is bound to eventually go, like, lose all sanity because we didn't get the good ending. Uh, but we're not Risky, so she can hold that. Um, I want to give a few shout-outs real quick. First off, uh, I want to shout-out a few individuals but who might seem a little bit funny, but they all have reasons. I want to give a shout-out to Tokigi, one of our tech people, for providing backup controllers, because my controller was not getting noticed by Steam for some reason. And in a similar vein, I want to give a shout-out to my friend Ixie, because uh, Xbox controllers and Switch controllers have a different layout. Uh, I usually play on Switch controller, so theoretically I wouldn't be used to this button layout. However, when my laptop gave out a few weeks ago, they recommended I use the 3DS version of this game to practice. The 3DS version, despite a 3DS having the Nintendo button layout, doesn't use it. It uses the Xbox layout. So they're the only reason I was practiced on this controller at all by complete accident. Uh, last individual shout out I want to give is my mom, because I had something happen that... I almost last second had to cancel my trip, so shout outs to her for coming in clutch and spending a amount of money I still feel bad about just to make sure I could still be here. Um, that being said, a few more shout outs. One to the Shantae community. I don't really interact with you much, but everyone I've met in there is really cool. Uh, shout outs to Fastest Furs in general for not only having my run, but also I've been a staff member there as long as it's been a team, and it's been some of the best moments of my life for the past three years, so thank you all so much. Uh, and I just want to thank everybody for being here. This went so well. I'm having such a good weekend. And the last couple hours of the marathon, we're in like the last six hours now, and they're full of great games. So please stay tuned uh, for the ending, and thank you so much. Woo, another big round of applause. Thank you so much for that absolutely fantastic run.